Good morning, welcome to Brighton's Alansha Restoration Co. Now, last week I mentioned about the little specks of uh, cement on the bricks, and I was going to use a brick tome to uh, colour the bricks up a bit. And as you can see, it's uh, quite successful. And if you look up top there, where they've now started to dry out because I've removed the paint and the sand cement, they're going patchy and white and all sorts of colours and the brick tone will sort that out right come back to you in a bit right as you can see some of these bricks up here have been replaced at some stage with a modern brick and the uh, wrong shade wrong colour so we're using this product to colour them up and it's quite simple all you do is a little brush and on it goes. And when that dries in, these bricks will match the rest of the building. And it's uh, called brick tinting. Now, a lot of these bricks have got cement, as you can see there, smeared on. So what the plan is, is to basically coat it up I think we've got a bit of paint on that one actually but coat it up with the tint and it gets rid of all them little blobs of cement just disguises them and makes the building look a lot more appealing right I shall carry on because it's not easy to do holding a, a camera and trying to do this so we'll come back to you in a short while. Well, it's lunchtime. Got the uh, cup of tea in the old billy can there, just brewing. Now then, if you look up there at that brickwork, that's had the brick toner on. There's a little bit at the bottom on the left-hand side there that I've not done yet. Now that brick tone has um, really transformed the appearance of the brickwork. They actually look like they're a, a new brick now. Um, but obviously they're not. They're uh, from um, 1864, possibly 1863 when they were made, which is good. Right, well I'm going to uh, have my cup of tea and I'm going to finish off the brick toning and then it's back to, unfortunately, stripping all that paint off there. Not looking forward to that. And now for a bit of paint removal. Right. So, the process is the needle gun, and we, as you can see there, just gently tease off the paint. Now, you're probably wondering why I haven't used something like a chemical poultice system, or perhaps a DOF cleaning system, or indeed sandblasting. Well, the reason is, the light greyish coloured stuff you can see on the bricks that I've now got the paint off, is cement mortar. Yep, yeah, that's right, cement mortar. Somebody, in their wisdom, for God knows whatever reason, has coated every last brick with really hard cement water. Why? I haven't got a clue. Maybe it was in a, a bid to try and waterproof the building or maybe something like that. So this is the reason I'm not using a chemical poultice. I started with that on the ground floor and it brought the paint off but then I had to spend hours with a needle gun and a cup disc getting off that damn cement that's all over the bricks. Well, there you go. It's just about done. Right, let's slow it down so you can actually see the needle gun doing its little bit there. Now, what I tend to do is work away at the edges. It seems to break the paint off a lot easier. And go in like a circular motion, although very slowly. The little needles jump up and down and they knock the paint off and that's pretty much how it works right 
we'll leave it there and stop the next bit. Good morning. It's now Wednesday. Just calling in at the, uh, the works. Very quiet around here this morning. Nobody about. Which is nice. It's only uh, full of people. And over there you can see an old Morris Miner that's been re-sprayed. Look at this chap here. They don't make them like that anymore. Right, so what are we doing today? Well, we're doing more of the uh, paint stripping. And the problem with that is I'm having to bring it off mechanically. Now, the reason that I'm doing that and I am not using, for example, a chemical poultice system or indeed steam clean with a, a DOF or similar machine is because basically sand and cement has been smeared all over the bricks which means that I can no longer use a chemical system or a steam system to simply remove the paint it's a bit of a pain but there we go Right, I'm just going to pick some stuff up after this very, very, very messy workshop, which is uh, well, well ready for a clean out. And we shall see you in a short while, doing a bit more on the job. And of course, before I forget, uh, we've no longer got um, all Miles working with us. He's um, changed jobs. Um, He's got a temporary job at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I do believe, um, because come September he's going back in the armed forces. And we wish him all the luck in the world. Um, he's a good lad, he's a hard worker, and um, I don't think that this industry was uh, quite what he's looking for. He prefers to march up and down with an automatic weapon. Okay, right, so we're on our way now. To the job we're just leaving the workshop now if you look over there you can see new houses and over there fields and of course where the new houses are used to be fields and it gets to that point in your life where you turn around to somebody younger and you go i oh, remember when that was all fields back there anyway off to the job see you in a bit well, that's a little bit more paint stripped off up there. I'm hoping to get that left-hand side completely stripped today. Uh, tomorrow I have to nip off to Ormskirk to do a little bit of uh, patching up on some line plastering. Um, I'm supposed to do it uh, earlier on this week. In fact, last week, actually, I was supposed to go on Friday. But because the weather's been good, as you can see, blue sky, um, I'd rather be out here doing this. Now, it's forecast rain tomorrow and Friday, so I shall go and do that then. Sorry, David, who I know watches the videos. Right, catch you in a bit. Back up the ladder to the top. It's a bit of a bit of a Fred Dibner type scaffolding, as you can see. Doesn't bother me, it's all safe. Now what we've done here is we've removed the paint and then we've gone over it with this chap here which is a cup disc and you use it a bit like a plane and it takes a fine surface off and the reason I'm doing that is, is because it's been sort of coated with sand and cement over the bricks you know it's only a couple of mil thick but even so I've still got to get it off and no amount of paint stripper or steam will get that off Right, I'm going to start making dust and noise, so I shall leave you there for a moment or two. And that is that corner stripped. Thank goodness. What a hard morning's work that was. Just those two little bits there to go. And that's all the paint off the front. So next, it's remove the uh, cement mortar and get it ready for uh, line pointing, like the rest of it. That was tricky, I've got to say. Right, I'm going to have a bit of lunch now, so we uh, shall see you in a bit. 
this little chap down here would join me for lunch and share my sandwich. I think it's a fledgling come out of a nest that's next to where we're working. He uh, seems to be digging for worms there. And there we have it. The top left hand corner is now done and ready for line pointing. I'm going to put some um, toner on it as well, um, on the brakes, just to hide the bits of uh, cement that are still on it that I can't get off. But apart from that, we're done up there, thank goodness. It's taken eight hours to strip that top and cut it out, ready for pointing, so not too bad. You can uh, take that scarf down now and put it over that side, but not today. Right, well that's it for uh, Wednesday. We shall see you tomorrow, which will be Thursday. And a very good morning to you. It's now Thursday. So what are we doing today? Well, today we're doing a couple of hours in the workshop. Doing... Are we ready? This. Yep. A piece of Victorian cast iron. Now this one has got a little fine rust on it. Uh, I did restore it, um, but it has been stored over winter upstairs in the little showroom that I have up there. Um, so I'm going to recoat it with this stuff, which is the graphite that I use to polish them up. Um, you'll see the process shortly. And also, if you can see there, there's a nice hole through that for a bolt to bolt it to the surround. Whereas this side, Hmm, yep, we've got a bit of a problem there. So we're going to have to drill it out. That's because when I was restoring it, I came to undo the bolt and it snapped off. Yep, it snapped off. Right, so I shall start the process and see you shortly. Right, let's see if we can get this to drill out. Using a smaller bit to start. Are you ready for a bit of noise? Seem to be having a bit of drill trauma there. It doesn't seem to want to stay on, which is strange. think that that bit is doing a great deal in there I don't want to press too hard in fear of snapping the bit right I'll cut it off there just for a second and come back to you when I've drilled it out because I think it's a two-handed job and it's just me with the camera hooray there we go it took seconds with that bigger bit that little bit was a bit too little so we've now got two holes so where have you gone? There we are. So what I'm going to do now is go and find myself a couple of bolts. And this then gets bolted onto those two points there. So we shall show you if I can undo the vice that is. It's a bit little this vice for this workshop. I've got to admit, but a friend gave it me and I'm very grateful. And we'll leave them. Right, there we go. So, what it does basically, that fits onto there, like that, and it bolts on. And then you're great to be in here somewhere with your raging coal fire polluting the atmosphere. Right, I'm going to go and find some bolts. This may involve me having to actually go out and purchase some because I don't think I've got any bolts left in here now. I think all I've got in here now is springs, which won't do. So we'll catch you in a little while 
when I've got some bolts. There we go, some bolts. And I got some more oil and a little bit of black spray to spray the what are now metallic metal bolts so they'll be black to match. So they go through there to bolt that onto there and then we'll black it all up which I will show you shortly. A little bit of spraying. Right, we'll let that dry in and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. It's just a bit easier doing the uh, the grates etc with the um, old spray can of heat proof paint because it's a bit difficult to do them with the old uh, graphite which we shall be doing on this piece. Now I had to countersink the holes that I drilled earlier because the head of the bolt wouldn't fit in and as you can see I've got very dirty hands now should put gloves on yeah so these these bolts wouldn't fit into the uh, the hole straight down so I've had to countersink them now so they're now sitting flush which is good so I'm glad I got some more oil because it made my life a bit easier okay right so I'm gonna have a cup of tea now and then I'm going to put some graphite on to that. The next stage is to get some of this fine rust off. I mean, it's not deep rust, it's just on the surface. So use this chappy here. The big old scary wire brush. And the way that we do that is... Turn on. Well, you get the general gist of that one so we'll uh we'll let you have a little break from it because it'll get boring because it's going to take me about 10 minutes to do that so obviously i'm not going to film that for 10 minutes and bore the pants off you so we'll catch you in a bit when it's all done and as if by magic that light rust is now gone it's uh ready for the old graphite this is really good stuff but uh, if you do use it I'd recommend putting on a pair of rubber gloves because for one it's probably not good for you and for two it's a bugger to get off your hands once you've got it on there so there we go right we shall come back to the polishing process in a moment or two well I've got this lovely old uh, Victorian surround here which we're in the process of restoring um, it wants the tiles putting in and again it wants polishing but that's going in uh, in the lounge at home Lady Stella has decided it's for us and I also have this one which is a reproduction which I just need to give a bit of a polish up which I must do actually in there and get that one up for sale so it's a nice piece and it's cast iron but it is, uh, it is modern. Now initially I bought this to, uh, to put in our lounge and she prefers that one with it being an original Victorian surround. So what I've got to do with that, like I said, I've got to repolish it, but this has a cast iron firebox. So again, I think what I'll do with that is probably give it a quick sandblast and then spray it with some uh, heat proof black which after one evening of having the fire lit will burn off anyway but it just looks nice when it first goes in and the same with the uh the bits on the bottom there 
we'll spray them black because they're all detachable those and the rest of it will be done with the graphite now when you think about it the graphite on these uh, old Victorian surrounds doesn't last indefinitely it's like anything that you polish every now and again it needs a polish so you could imagine the housemaids back in the 1800s there once a year maybe polishing the old surrounds with a bit of bit of graphite or black lead probably done in the summer when the fires weren't lit but what a horrible job you probably have to get up at 5 a.m and start polishing the fires and emptying them out and all sorts of horrible things like that right it's lunch time so i'm gonna have my lunch and then buff this up because it should be dry by then and we'll show you when it's buffed up now this is another lovely piece of victorian cast iron i bought this for 12 pounds off a chap it was in a hell of a state you couldn't make out any of the detail on it of the thick paint and on the inside kind of here was a piece of rusty steel plate i think originally it had been a big copper piece which i won't be replacing obviously because of the cost of it but uh, i sandblasted it got all the paint off and again did it with the graphite so it's a lovely piece it's a, a fender for a fireplace now lady seller has claimed it to go with the victorian surround when I've restored it and fitted it, which will be later on this year. So I was just giving this a bit of a polish up because, uh, again, it had acquired a light rust over the winter. And there's a couple of bits that I'm in the process of doing, which again belong to a fire surround. So it's not just buildings we do. We do all sorts of bits and pieces of uh, restoration. Workshop comes in handy for that in winter. I've given this a bit of a wipe over this morning. It's looking a bit cleaner now. Like I said, that's a reproduction piece, which uh, I'll be putting up for sale very shortly. It is a nice piece. Right, back to doing some work. And there's a quick look at the fireplace before I strip the paint. And there we go. It's back together again. All polished up. Now when you think this piece has survived two world wars. Many years of use. About 150 years old. Now when I got this piece in it was thick with paint. All this lovely detail you couldn't really see because of the paint. So now it looks like it did when it was first made back in 1850-ish. Now I do get these in from time to time and restore them and sell them on. I also restore them for other people. Now, if you're out there and you've got one and you fancy it restoring, you can contact us, leave us a message. And if you can get it to us, we can certainly restore it for you for a minimal fee. They do come up like new. So, they are worth doing and they are worth saving. So many of these have been um, smashed up by the scrap man melted down and turned into teaspoons, which isn't good. Okay, so it's ready for fitting tomorrow. So I might do a video on that, and I might not. just depends on how busy I am tomorrow. So we'll leave that there today. So here we are once again in Ormskirk. This is one of the rooms that... Uh, I plastered just after Christmas. 
In fact, I think I might have done this particular room a couple of days before Christmas with the top coats. But it's all dried out now and looking absolutely lovely. There are videos out on my channel of me plastering out this cottage. Right, so I now need to start fitting this fireplace that yesterday we did in the workshop. So we shall see you in a short while. You can see it's quite a big opening. Put the bricks are there and I brought some uh, fresh mixed lime mortar with me. But uh, it's going to look quite nice when it's in there, that. Of course, this is the one I was doing in the workshop yesterday. Right, I'm going to leave you there for a minute because I need to go down to the van and get things like tools and mortar. And I'm sure you don't want to watch me do that. So we'll catch you in a little while. Well, what do you think? It was quite nice, I think. And of course, this room earlier on this year and just before Christmas, we lime plastered. And it's now got some lime wash on it. I think it needs a, a couple of coats, but it's looking good. Right, now for the process of actually fixing it to the wall. Um, not quite decided what we're doing with that as yet, because um, these normally get bricked in, so we might uh, be setting a few bricks inside that opening, which I think it needs to be honest. Right, okay, well we'll leave it at that for now. There we go, it's fitted. I didn't bother filming the fitting. Um, not really a lot to show, just chucking a few bricks down and that's pretty much it. There was nothing really um, exciting. Anyway, so that's um, pretty much that one done. So you've seen the process of it being in the workshop, having a little bit of work done on it, and you've now seen it in its new home. Now this surround came out of a house in Amsdal on the final coast, where it had sat for oh, 150 years, somewhere around that mark. When I got it, it was covered in thick white paint, as you've probably seen in the video already. So, I cleaned it all off. If I remember rightly, I think I sandblasted this one. However, I then polished it with graphite. We drilled out um, a snapped off bolt. We put in two new bolts to the little grate down there. And of course, fitted it. Built a nice little firebox at the back there. Uh, used a white mortar because it's a decorative piece. So that, uh, that looks lovely now. And that's it. Done. So the next challenge is, on this project, is patching up the finish on a couple of ceilings. Now I was going to do this today, but like a fool, I've forgotten to bring some fine sand. Tongue full of lime putty, but no fine sand, so I can't make my finish. But not to worry, I will return at some point. Well, it's been very different this week. Removing paint from the straw boat in, cutting out the old sand and cement pointing, toning bricks, doing restoration work on cast iron fire surrounds in the workshop, and finally fitting a cast iron Victorian surround in a Victorian cottage. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video this week. If you have, give us that big thumbs up. I like the thumbs up. It helps with the logarithms. If you've subscribed, thank you very much. That also helps. and I really appreciate it when people subscribe. It shows that you are enjoying the videos, which is encouraging. If you haven't subscribed yet and you are enjoying the videos, please hit that button and subscribe. There's no charge. It's free. 
Right, well that's it for this week. And the end of this week's video on messing about with old buildings. And we shall see you next week where we shall be doing some more work on the Trollboat Cottage in St Anne's. See you soon.